Should really make a house instead of just living in a village. What the heck? What on earth? Who are you? What are you doing? There. This isn't multiplayer. What is this? Whoa, whoa, what the frick? What the frick? What the frick? Welcome back, folks. I'm IC. Glad to have you join me today. So as most of you know, I covered a lot of GMOD ARGs a while back. Most of them are questionable in terms of quality, but they all had one thing in common. To look at a still popular game through a nostalgic, yet more creepy lens. Now obviously, Gary's Mod isn't the only game which can cause such a feeling. There is another game which, due to its popularity, could even be claimed brings forth the same feeling tenfold. I am, of course, talking about Minecraft. What a shocker, you knew that already. So Minecraft had plenty of creepy and mysterious stories told through it for years. Despite this, the introduction of ARG or your own fiction style stories haven't quite existed until 2014. At least ones with said genres as their intent. The first appearance of an actual Minecraft ARG, as far as I'm aware, is with Old Root, created by Alex Bale. And the second was this abomination called Diamond Animation, created in late 2015. Unfortunately, it looks like the channel was either abandoned or repossessed, as the entire series is now missing. L luckily, I managed to save everything before that happened, so maybe I'll talk about it one day. Who knows? Despite Old Root setting the groundwork for future Minecraft ARGs, as far as I'm aware, it wasn't until roughly seven years later that the concept re-emerged, and from 2020 onward, Minecraft-related unfiction and ARG stories have slowly established themselves. The two largest being Alpha 1.0.16 versions and Legend Finder's Look at the Moon, both of which have been covered by Retro Gaming Now and RT60 respectively. But obviously, these aren't the only ones. There's plenty of other lesser-known series out there, and just like I did with Gmod ARGs, I'm, uh... I'm gonna do just that. So today, friends, we're gonna look at a channel called Slots Available, with the second half translating to... Eternal Worship. The Slots Available channel was created on January 4th, 2021. The About section reads, Players have enjoyed Minecraft. In the end, the rain wept again, with a new body to mourn. What a mysterious intro. My best interpretation of this relates to the almost cyclical nature of Minecraft's popularity. As others have noted, searching for Minecraft was extremely common around 2013, four years later and there's a notable decline. Then moving into 2020, the game's popularity somewhat resurged. The reasoning for this is irrelevant here, as the key takeaway should be that we can assume, to some extent, these trend waves represent different generations of players. Many who started in 2013 or sooner have since moved on in life. And if you're one of those who will try rebutting me in the comments with, I started back then, yet I still play Minecraft. Congratulations, I wasn't talking about you. Anyways, upon looking back on the game today, they may get nostalgic. Players have enjoyed Minecraft. And this will inevitably happen to those who started in 2020, too, with a new body to mourn. Despite the channel getting created in January, it takes until late June before we get the first video. Read.slot. The video is in black and white, starting off by zooming out from four holes in the ground. The sounds of bees or some other insect plays over this, as everything fades out and four dots briefly appear, identical to the holes. The description reads, One of our dearest longtime players loading up a new world. Isn't it marvelous that, lack of any capitalization aside, it's explained that an older player started up a new Minecraft world, tying back to what I said about player generations, even if it's vague. I also find it odd how the second sentence is abruptly cut off. No explanation for it though. Game start.
We start with the player punching trees, as you do. However, the way he plays contradicts the previous description. He gathers logs but leaves the tops of trees alone, and does a shift click when crafting. This suggests he has little knowledge on how to be efficient, so perhaps the description was on someone else. Either way, they walk around the edge of a river before coming across a 1x1 hole in the side of a cliff. It's unclear what's at the other end, as we suddenly cut to the symbol again but with four squares. Another follows, and it's suddenly dark and raining. The player crafts a sword, before coming across some strange repeating terrain generation. He falls down a 1x1 hole, as the video cuts to a loading screen, only the dimensions are different, and whoever it's from seems to be using a texture pack. Our dearest player doing the preparations for advancing in the game. He is lucky enough to find the mushroom biome. Is whoever wrote this description implying these stone things with the green top meant to be mushrooms? Uh, sure. Obviously this isn't natural. House building. My suspicions about the loading screen were confirmed, as this is clearly a different user building a house. To make things easier, we'll call this guy Player 2 and the other Player 1. Player 2 appears to be using the Faithful Venom texture pack, or that's what it reminds me of anyway. Eventually, the game starts lagging, before the video cuts to him approaching… that thing. This is… impossible to take seriously, but I shall persevere. My best guess is that whatever this is and the four holes were related. Upon some basic research about beehives, these holes, or cells, could be where these abominations multiply. This could also mean that when the video freezes at the end, the seeds Player 2 is holding may be an offering of food for whatever's down there. And although it could be a coincidence, the use of a texture pack heavily associated with the YouTuber Ant Venom could therefore reinforce the connection between this player and the bee. Mining Session The commenter mentions those phrases within the tags on these videos, and while the ones on this are gibberish, the previous ones are more legible, if not so mysterious. They are us. Check a file loaded properly, can't risk this time around. There's too many in the sky. Switch places. Again? Return items. Game starts may have more relevance later, but I find those of the other two videos interesting. They appear to be segments of conversation between two individuals, possibly these bee people things. On to this video itself. We start with Player 2 looking in a chest, displaying his ingenious organization skills and weirdly having all his tools on the opposite side of the hotbar. He approaches a cave, to which a cave sound plays with near-perfect timing. However, the bee may have also had something to do with it. Who knows? While mining, a brief frame back at the house appears. Player 2 stares down a 1x1 hole within his home, with one of those bee things at the bottom of it. They may have moved or started a new hive within it, which could explain why there's honey in the chest. We return to Player 2 mining and we start hitting bees again as he digs into a cave. Possibly reacting to the noise, he starts running back up, only to have somehow wound up in a snowy biome, standing before a poppy flower, the same type broken by Player 1 in Game Start. The video abruptly ends with another loading screen, again with the dimensions changed and the texture back on. On top of this, the second half of the description is cut off again. He doesn't seem to find anything, sadly enough however, he returns to- It's hard to say how it's meant to end, but he certainly teleported a changed world somehow. Animal Farm Ha <laughs> ha 
Not much to say on this one. We're back to the perspective of player one from game start. He's built a house and goes out to feed some animals, before mining a single block of stone for whatever reason. During the few seconds he's away, the bee sounds fade in and out, and when the player heads back, his animals are gone. The tags in this one look to be more gibberish, but could also be commentary on player one's actions, specifically feeding the animals. Don't know what wrong farm could mean though. Sky. The tag from game start is definitely appropriate here, yet instead there's can't be helped and no fire, repeating multiple times. It's impossible to tell who's behind the camera of this one, but whoever they are, they've been convicted of trespassing, spelled wrong of course. They weren't meant to see this place, as also hinted by the unauthorized access. Low dot slot. Another video from what I'll call the Hive. Considering the description reads, saving the progress of our players, it only makes sense for the bees to be in charge of everything we've seen so far. Three flowers are placed in total, two sunflowers and one lily of the valley. If players one and two weren't who trespassed in the sky video, then perhaps whoever they are got the different flower as a result. The tags just go over where the saving process succeeded. Building tutorial path. We're given a proper introduction to Player 3, in which they're forced to make tutorial video as punishment for trespassing. This is indicated with their inventory being full of lilies of the valley, and more obviously in the video tags. I'm unsure if the poor cut to applying a texture pack before opening the chest means anything, but the sudden switch to Player 3 in a void certainly does. Don't seem like a system any reasonable person would want to be a part of. Cave Exploration Okay, this one's confusing as heck, but here we go. The description says, Our beloved player ventures, but the statement is false. This footage contains two perspectives, one of a player with 11 experience levels and another with three. This is further proven in the video tags, but we'll get to that shortly. When the former player is looking at a lava pool, a bee can be seen watching them. Later on, both players either fall in or touch lava, catching a flame. The guy with 11 levels dies as a result. However, the footage continues changing perspectives after the fact, meaning nothing we're seeing here is in order. Upon the one dying, we're shown a date for their username. 2021, January 24th. The choice for this format for dates is interesting, as it's not used by many countries, if not interchanged with other formats. And that's as long as there's no possibility this is some time traveler nonsense and they're from the year 2024. Thankfully that's not the case, cause by comparing this date to the channel's creation, we can see this occurred before slots available ever started posting videos. Looking at the tags now, there's three things. 
One is the word multi, further implying this is two different players. The next is a timestamp, only I got no clue what it's for. Lastly, there's a link to an image. It's titled Hole, and I mean, yeah, that's what it is. Apart from matching the one seen prior, there's nothing else to this image. Roller coaster experience. More of Player 2, this time riding a roller coaster as the bees watch him. There's strange missing blocks throughout, but the obvious scene at the end meant to appear in the sky slash void, but also beneath torches for some reason? Regardless, it's nowhere as concerning as the fact Player 2's hunger bar is just missing. Could it explain why he barely moves throughout the video? Or could I be overthinking it? The hole at the end of the tunnel is also near identical to the image we saw, besides the rails leading up to it. Lastly, there's the text, Larval, Rewarded, and Of Great Use. Larval is a state certain creatures have before metamorphosing into adults. If this is describing player 2, then what are they? Boat travel. A bee can be seen by an underwater shipwreck, still watching player 1, as he takes an unnecessarily long time to place a boat. He comes across a small floating tree, attempting to mine it only for the video to repeat itself. He gives up and runs into another bee on a floating island. After this, he stumbles across some sort of gateway, which after traveling through gets transported... somewhere. His hunger bar now gone too. The video tags match that of the previous, only with more additions. Employment. United in hour. Sweet embrace. These videos must have been players 1 and 2 becoming part of the hive for whatever employment entails. Again, the description makes me distrust it. Our beloved player moves. They are having the time of their lives. Player beginning.
we're introduced to another player, this time using VR. At least he's competent with mining the whole tree though. Despite spawning next to a beehive, I'm gonna assume it's a mistake, as the bees don't have the best up face. Two frames flash by before we cut to the player building. One's a poppy flower hovering in the air at the other end of a hole. The next is it being sealed off. This is likely from player 2's perspective, based on the aspect ratio in the texture pack. The frames repeat again while VR guys building, when we then cut to him mining the side of a mountain. There's also the three with 25 yellow dots slash lines. Probably more bee symbolism. We get another frame of the poppy sealed off with the yellow block, and we then see the player crafting a campfire. If we're to assume the bees hate fire like from Sky, then the flower getting covered with the black block, and the player seemingly getting thrown in the void could be punishment. But wait, weren't these frames from player 2's perspective? If that's the case, part of employment could be that now he gets to judge new player's actions. The tags of this one are cryptic, not being aware of what he is in. There's too many of them in the walls. Workplace. And please inform ourselves if this is implying players aren't aware they're going through this, then again, this hive is dangerous and shouldn't be trusted. The image link is part of a censored handbook on how the employees operate. Section 1, Observance is the most understood. We've seen these drones in odd places throughout the series, clearly there to watch players. However, they're ordered not to directly interfere with the player. Section 2 is Judgment, which we saw a lot of in this video. Despite this, the results certain actions merit are all censored. We could assume fire is what's not allowed, but for reward player, perhaps building houses? Section 3 is entirely censored, so we'll probably figure it out later. Lastly, there's this final part labeled Apeth Insecta. I'm assuming it's Latin, which is rarely a good sign in an ARG. It supposedly translates to bees insects, which makes no sense and is probably wrong. All we really need to know is they're then sworn to the queen. We've yet to see this queen, but based on the frankly cringe royalty-esque ways players are addressed in the video descriptions, she could be the uploader. Building Tutorial Hedge We learn how to make a hedge. It is imperfect. Yeah, like you're the arbiter of design, whomstever you are. Clearly, though, the uploader is less kind to disobedient players. We watched player 3 getting forced to build a hedge in another building tutorial. The number of flowers in the inventory possibly signifying the amount of sin they have left to repent for? I literally don't know how to describe my thought process on that. They finish the hedges, and the thumbnail briefly flashes on screen. Yellow and black text. What a coincidence. We cut back to player 3 in the void. Only this time, they're aware of it. Possibly even trying to break out at the end. Repent. Teach us. Knowledge. The walls of the sky. Well, I was right on repenting for sins. Finally, there's a link to another YouTube video. Going there leads us to a new channel, Dawn Gaming. It's unclear what his avatar is of, but the banner appears to be a dawning sun, and a red one at that. The about section shows this channel was created the same day as the building tutorial, with the description, He used to show gameplay of Terraria and other means of protections, but he lost his battle. We will upload the proof of his hard work. So this channel was made in memoriam of someone. Huh. Let's take a look at the actual video we were linked to. Preparations. The sound of rain accompanies the videos we view a Terraria world. The camera moves over to four familiar holes, before they're covered back up. Description reads, Something important before starting the game. We hope, before cutting off again. This time, however, it might continue via the video tags. We hope that they would not know. Their buzzing can be heard in the rain. Going back to slots available. Emergency measure.
We're in the VR player's world again, only this time from someone else's perspective. The description refers to them as management. The player's house is entirely black instead of fresh wood like before, possibly meaning that's where they're trapped, instead of just in the void. Management breaks the campfire, possibly freeing the drones above it before we get text for a system reboot. The gameplay returns, and is now a one by one hole in place of the campfire. Managerial information, pheromones, player punished successfully, files damaged, none, they are no longer larva. The word pheromones may describe the effect fire has on the bees, tricking three of them to hover over it. Also, I have no clue how accurate that is in reality, so don't believe it to be true beyond this series. A video was uploaded at Dawn Gaming on the same day. Failure. There was a hole. In the wall. I don't know much about Terraria, but I'm assuming the description refers to this. Anyways, the player lagly places three gravestones down, followed by a campfire. A bunch of bees then appear, strengthening the idea that campfires attract them. We get more information amongst nonsense phrases in the tags. They try to force us to fail. They inhibit us. We will resist. Spelt wrong. Mare tranquillitatis. They got in through the rain. More Latin, translating to a sea of tranquility. Perhaps this isn't in reference to a literal sea, but rather the feeling drones get when sensing the unknowing trickery of campfires. Village gameplay. Another video is splicing together two different players' gameplay, this time encountering villages. One finds a hole in the ground, while the other finds a drone within one of the houses. The latter then rings two bells, which you should do upon subscribing. They then break a poppy flower, causing a cut to more of the employee handbook. Section 54 seems to separate drones and employees into their own categories, possibly implying employees manage the drones when observing players. It mentions employment as one of the rewards, and Section 56 appears twice with at least one of them mistyped, with the legible punishment being expulsion from the hive. We still don't know the true name yet, though. The description and tags are again connected. Our players witness a village. They enjoy expansion onto new ground. Walled in, yet the sky is free. Begin the process. Interesting how they're upfront about the video showing two different players this time. Announcement to workers. More footage for management. The usual four hold symbol has expanded, though it could just be for this one video. The text at the end reads, New ones must be tested. 
We require more. Increase the workforce. Noteworthy tags read, Test their loyalty to the Queen. The Queen grants us reason. The description expands upon this test. A distant meeting was held. A program was made. It contains knowledge. Are we human yet? A link directs us to a download page for an educational application quiz for our three new employees, as well as the old ones. Side note, uh, don't download random crap you find online. I decided to risk it and become a test dummy for whatever this file is. Don't do what I did. Anyways, the game was made using RPG Maker, and without running any EXE files, let's look at what this thing contains. Most of the folders are empty, exceptions being sprites for the player, background, this thing of holes in the panorama folder, and a bunch of terminal images. Starting with the handbook ones, we get more info on judgment. Campfires are other major flame-related objects. Disobeyance. That's not a word. Harming equipment. This likely refers to what's described in the next image, covering the terminal itself. The terminal is used in order to carry out judgment of actions as described in section 2. Leaving it unattended is strongly prohibited outside of certain emergencies. Your assigned drone must always be to the left side of your terminal. If that's the case, then are these not drones? Additionally, it's described as a one drone to one employee ratio. So then where do the bees come in? Do multiple employees watch individual players? Combining the next part in section 54 with the previous segment for village gameplay gives us a complete line. Drones are allowed to influence the world. Due to their inability to move, they are not to return where our cherished players are able to observe them. So theoretically, they can mine and break blocks, but only around them, if not just in front of them because the majority we've seen don't change directions. Next up, there's an oath, which translates to, Bees and insects become nothing out of nothing. Talk about nihilistic viewpoints. Next we have this pixelated flower, labeled Convict's Plant. If we're going off the flower assigned to player 3, this is a real lily of the valley. The final image is an addendum regarding management. Respect it. It gives you life. Obey it. In compliance to its orders may lead to severe consequences, such as being fired f Do not c its motives. It knows better than you do. Well management sounds lovely, huh? So apart from this and some sound files, that's all I'm willing to get without running the game itself. If someone else more knowledgeable is willing to run it and admire the creator's true effort, go right ahead. Personally, I can't be asked without setting up a virtual machine, which I don't want to, nor know how. Back to the videos now. Fishing living. one of the players from Village Gameplay fishing, casually catching whatever a rift is and consuming it. At the end, they turn around to look at this thing. It's named the watching thing in the tags, and the description ends with, we messed up. Something wasn't meant to happen here. Was it the rift? Did an employee or a drone intervene in a way they're not supposed to? It's unclear. Normal playtime. It just gets weirder, folks. The player duplicates the rift from crafting somehow, while the watching thing is still present in the background. It has a username above it, but it's hard to read from this distance. I also don't know where else to say this, but it appears to have four eyes, in the same formation as the whole symbols we've seen. Upon the player drinking water and checking chests, it vanishes alongside some walls of leaves. These leaves remind me of the hedges built by player 3. Why would they be here? This player then empties one of the chests, before cutting to them in a small snowy area surrounded by dark walls. They place the poppy down, and the world gets deleted. The description and tags combine to, Nothing out of the ordinary happens to our relished player. It keeps on watching. Why? Begins. Along with the SoundCloud link. Honestly, I don't know what to make of these. They're very... experimental to say the least. The only one worth sharing here is Importance 1. As one converted to a spectrogram, it reads, 
The hierarchy is strict. Follow it. Repeatedly. Duality of players. Time seems to randomly switch between day and night, as the players go about their business. While Mauer24 harvests carrots, the other player joins in before more sections of the employee's handbook interrupt the video. Section 6. Convicts. Their actions must not be left unpunished. They must be rid. Section 7. The watching thing. It is inevitable. We do not understand. Do not interact. Whatever this thing is, Kohive is afraid of it. That's their name by the way. Kinda had nowhere to say that too. The players casually sail past the void pillar and stumble across a poppy surrounded by snow. In a jungle biome. Definitely no significance behind that. Mauer grabs the flower before leaving. They approach another dark structure before the video ends. We are getting closer. Not larva, not yet. Pyramid activity. We're shown three different sections of a pyramid. The first being the level you dig through to reach the pit. The second is from the pyramid's top floor, surrounded by flowers and bees. Lastly, we cut to possibly the same player having fallen all the way down the pit. The description states, Successful. Employee A has been promoted. Additionally, the tags describe this as a conversion, possibly how one unlocks understanding of something. Celebration. More footage for management, as stated by the description and text. Today, five years have passed. Five years since we got rid of Convict 1. His failure is our victory. The last phrase having two meanings, historical recreation, and his creation is to be protected soon. That video was posted on July 26th, and on the same day, we get another Undone Gaming. 2016, January 24th, Space Funeral Oddity Final.
Space Funeral is an indie RPG game. It centers around a boy named Philip saving the world from some type of corruption. Is this inclusion on Don Gaming's channel meant to reference their story here? No idea. There hasn't been a single character in this story so far that I would describe as a protagonist. The description doesn't help either, and the only thing in the text is the word commemoration, usually describing ceremonies and celebrations, fitting with the video back on slots available. The next one's also on Don's channel, dating even further back. 2014, April 23rd, Space Funeral Test 1. First time Clements used RPG Maker Media. According to the text file of the same name, the area depicted as new and the lag spike might have been the high, as he referred to it, getting into the media. He called this a possible win. The tags also describe this as, before the storm. So whoever Clements is, he must have created the hive somehow. The inclusions of a drone and the watching thing in the gameplay could either be things of the hive breaking in, or co-opted for the hive after the fact, taking Clements' concepts as the drone and watcher from him. Regardless, this proves Clements had a large role in the development of Cohive, having either made the questionnaire game himself, or indirectly giving Cohive the understanding of how to use RPG Maker, enough to make it themselves. Only, what could have happened between this and 2016 for July 26 to matter so much? Was 2014 just a trial run, with 2016 being the final? If so, then why is this footage from January? And on the same day as the two players in the cave video, no less. Old memory.
more footage of the duo from duality players, only this time it's from Mauer's perspective. To add more confusion, as if there wasn't enough, the video is supposedly 11 years old as of the upload date, and due to the way it's phrased, this means Mauer is the queen. Hi, uh, this is editing I see. So apparently I can't read. The screenshot clearly says from the year 2010 of our queen, which is just a parody of the common phrase the year of our lord. So yeah, I didn't see this, and for what you just heard me say, I go with the theory that Mauer is the queen for the entire rest of the video. So, well the good news is that in reality it's never actually established who the queen is, so I'm not gonna bother changing it because as we'll see, it does not matter. This is a video of her memories. If that's the case, it does make sense why they're both not described as players here, and also why they don't talk at all, if they're more used to the odd occurrences. So, the queen's just a gamer, I guess. The video ends with Cielo, or however you pronounce it, falling in one of the holes. One of our older work. It was harder to influence, but we were stronger too. Memorial. To the immense everything. Oh, what a trick. Another memory, this time from Cielo's view. They mined some trees, seemingly ignoring the burning ruins in the distance as Mauer's meant to discover them first. Upon a closer look, it almost resembles the basalt delta biome from Minecraft's Nether update. Yet, this is Alpha Minecraft. In fact, according to this version, the Nether would have just been added. Despite this, it shouldn't be in the overworld. Both players fall to their deaths, before a shorter picture of a tree. The entry to the vast, as seen by mankind. Is this implying there's a real connection between this tree and Minecraft? So like, what? Did Clubbits put his gaming setup on the branches or something? How is this meant to work? The tags describe some area within this video as the drone deployment testing medium. My guess is the overall another. But again, everything's so vague. I couldn't even tell you what this new vast location is even if I tried. One of our older recordings. They noticed. They remembered. The next three videos are on Dawn's channel. Starting with, 2014, September 8th, Gary's Mod Car.
Me and Joan are playing some Gary's Mod, just having some dumb fun. In a conversation, he also mentioned having weird holes and poppies in his inventory in Minecraft. Odd. That's what I remember Clemens texting me on that day. Oh god. Oh god, I'm not ready to go back! So apparently this is footage of Clemens and Jonah. The latter speaking of the familiar holes and poppies. Only we've yet to see someone having holes in their inventory. Clemens also finds this strange, despite having a greater connection to the whole hive situation. The tags are mostly nonsense, besides commemoration and a media filing. Unfortunately, the file's now missing. 2014, August 27th, Gmod Hoverboat. The description contains another quote from Clements. I'm not even surprised why the change is in the location anymore. Odd manifestation of the drones, however. So it seems he's become unfazed by the hive infecting all the games he plays at this point, not caring about how he suddenly changed maps. He also implies that drones will manifest themselves into whatever similar in-game entity is deemed fit. In other words, for Gmod and Half-Life 2 specifically, city scanners are the most appropriate, as their main purpose is to follow the player around and watch him. There's another image in the tags, along with the word hole. This leads me to believe that, to some extent, holes are used to change worlds slash maps. As we saw in a Terraria video, bees technically emerge from one. From what happened to Clements here, perhaps this is what happens when humans interact with them. Or maybe I'm wrong. Honestly, I don't know at this point. This ARG has me bewildered. 2016, January 24th, last day. The last thing we see from Clements. The last date you'll ever have. Now others know that they shouldn't have. So, I don't know how else to explain this apart from just saying it. Clements is Convict 1. We knew from first finding this channel that it's made in memoriam for someone. Only took a while to understand who. The tags also back up such a claim. I could hear them all along. They will celebrate. And they will remember my deeds. It makes sense for Kohive to then celebrate Clements' failure. It makes sense for why we've seen the date January 24th so much. From cave exploration to space funeral and now this. So then... Why does the celebration video mention this date literally nowhere throughout? It indirectly mentions the year as 2016, and there's the space funeral video posted on the same day with the date. But how am I meant to connect the two apart from this one single tag that's not even shared with the celebration video? Today, five years have passed. What else am I to assume other than the upload date? Insane. <sighs> well, we should be nearing the end. Back to slots available. Five. A player falls in one of the holes, winding up on a yellow plane, aka a super flat world with yellow concrete as the surface. He witnesses her. The end comes in five. Her many faces. Royalty. The face of Steve flashes on screen, followed by a language I don't know. Not only does this look ridiculous, how do you expect me to translate this? Building tutorial decoration one. A final video from Player 3, with even less flowers now. Don't know why the texture pack's gone. Perhaps they've done enough repenting. They spot the Watcher in the distance to try speaking to him, revealing their name to be Fortress of Vies. Judging by the label Old Friend, they've also met before. It ends with this creepy image, depicting the Watcher in real life. It also seems Kohai has been learning more about it. Countermeasures in origin. As a side effect of the procedure, it may have been on a whim? My guess is that this says, Previously Human Clements. My reasoning being the length of the censored words compared with those above him. It is a previous denizen of the vast. Is it us? Another image is contained within the tags, described as machinery for humans to operate, or machinery that uses humans. However, I don't believe the story's gone in such a direction to that extent. Back to Dawn's channel, with 2015, April 5th, B-Hop compilation.
The only things of note are that Clemens is playing on a really broken version of the GM Fork map, this message briefly appears, and that he's possibly still alive if I'm assuming this message and the tags are from Clemens himself. Wait, what? And back to slots available. Next video translating to For Hope in Greek. A user named 24 Reverberations interacts with the Watcher, who apparently only communicates with telepathy, since it does literally nothing. The description reads, Thousands were lost. This, combined with the actual dialogue in the video, leads me to believe 24 Reverberations is also the Queen, which additionally means this is Mauer 24. Makes sense, I guess, since they both have the same number in their names. Wait, this number also ties back to January- Yeah, okay, cool. No idea what this word means. It could be the English spelling of something in Russian, but it may also translate to celebration from Javanese. It could be a coincidence, but if not, then why on earth would that language only appear now? At the top of this, there's tags like Warring, Shattered, Hopeless, and Daughter of Alkanost, a bird woman from Slavic folklore. Why? The Queen's the daughter of a mythical creature now? Or is this just to make these beings sound all-knowing? Because all you're doing is making references to things that are completely unnecessary, and honestly just serve to further confuse people. Congratulations! So in my desperate attempts to understand this, I'll assume Kohive and the Watcher had a massive war with each other, killing thousands of drones and or employees, referenced by the mention of Broken Kin, and at the end of it all, the Queen decides to team up with the Watcher, or something. Last video on the slots available channel, and the last for management, Erase.slot. The video is of someone looking at a wither rose, before panning to the four holes. They place a campfire over where the poppy light and jump in. They have been locked. Clearly, this is an ending of some sort. However, this isn't the final video, as one more was posted at Dawn Gaming over a week later. Conclusion 1. The game plays of a modified version of the game off. That or it uses its art style. Regardless, the player character, whose appearance matches that of the Watcher, approaches an altar to Zachary, who's basically a merchant character in the original game. He says, and face the queen, followed by another variant of the phrase eternal worship in Greek. We're shown the four holes symbol behind a chapter card, before the player ascends to what resembles a stairway to heaven, accompanied by two lines on either side. Similar to the holes from the Terraria video, they're interrupted by what looks like a battle sequence, during which they decide to hatch something, possibly a metaphor for the next act of this ARG, as hinted by the tags. So. What on earth have we just witnessed? Here's my best guess. In 2010, two players named Celios and Maurer run into some odd things while playing Minecraft. Somewhere along the lines between then and four years later, Maurer becomes the queen of the hive. This hive then manages to get on Clemens' computer, through means which are never explained, and at first he doesn't seem opposed to it. During this period, the hive learns things directly or indirectly via Clemens, be it modding games, etc. Eventually, Clemens either gives in to the hive or grows fed up with it, causing him to be labeled Convict 1. 
This occurs on January 24th, 2016, and is a big deal for the Hive, potentially granting them the power to spread further beyond Clements, maybe by a random tree in his backyard. They begin watching Minecraft players, determining if they are fit for joining the Go Hive Hive Mind. At times, they take forceful actions to lower these players in, punishing those who don't concede, with apparently no one willing to stand against this other than Clemens himself, who may have well transformed into the Watcher through some unknown process that's only described as a procedure. The Queen notices this and panics. It's demanded that more players are found to be assimilated into Kohive, preparing for war. Following this, the Queen potentially loses to the Watcher, before being forced or willingly joining a side for another more dangerous opponent that's unseen. Does that answer anything? No. But it's the best overarching storyline I could think of for all this. Ultimately, that's all I've got for this Minecraft ARG. While it does a poor job at resolving mysteries, its themes and some of the creative choices are very unique, especially with the custom game, the inclusion of a VR player, and the video splicing together two different perspectives. It's got things going for it, that's for sure. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Apologies if this got confusing at times, there ain't much I can do about it. Feel free to subscribe, especially to slots available if they ever make an Act 2, and perhaps my next video will actually be comprehensible. With that said, see ya.